Hey there! Welcome to the Ring of Faith. 2019 has been one of our best years, but 2020, yet to come, is going to be even better. And we are so excited to share it with you. Go ahead and take a look at these clips. Here are some training tips with Anthony and Leanne to help you in your 2020. All things are possible. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Check out these clips from 2019 where Anthony and I teach about how you can have a great 2020 in your walk with God. So today we're going to give you characteristics of a winner because you know you need to know what it takes to be a winner in God's eyes and according to God's word. Mm -hmm. So number one is that God sees you righteous. Mm -hmm. This is key and it may not sound like a big deal or it might sound like a big deal like it was to me when I found out this truth. But God does see you righteous because of Jesus. Jesus walked the earth absolutely not sinning with no flaws. He was God walking the earth. He never sinned. But when he died and rose again, he made that same righteousness available to each and every one of us. In fact, it says in Romans 3.28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. You see, before Jesus, they had to do all these things to be accepted and approved by God and to be considered righteous. You had to do righteous things and the things you didn't do, you had to bring all these you know, um, sacrifices to atone for. But after Jesus, we're, it's a different method. We are justified by faith apart from our deeds. So it has nothing to do with the works. And that word justified, we looked up, means to declare righteous. We have been declared righteous righteous because of Jesus. That's great news. And that's good. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, this is a scripture that really changed her life. For he, he, he made him who knew no sin, God made Jesus who knew no sin, to be sin for us so that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ. Like she said, they used to have to do all this good stuff, and that's what religion's all about. Man doing all the good stuff and taking it to God and saying, God, will you accept this? Is this good enough? Christianity, Jesus did it all, and he brings it to man. He says, man, will you receive this? And when you receive that, you become the righteousness of God in Christ, right standing with God. When God sees you, he sees you in that winning position as righteous, sinless, blameless, holy, forgiven, accepted. This is how God sees you in that winning position. That's so good. And another great scripture is Romans 5, 17, and it talks about how this righteousness is a gift. It's not anything we can earn or work for or go to church enough, even though that put us in a winning position to go to church. We can't go enough to earn that righteousness. We can't read the Bible enough to earn that righteousness. We can't help enough you know, elderly ladies across the street to earn that righteousness. It is only by faith in Jesus Christ he is the one that, according to Romans 5, 17, it says, By one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that is available to each and every one of us that believe on Jesus, that gift, that free gift of righteousness, right standing with God. I encourage you to take that scripture, Romans 5, 17, daily. Father, I receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Meditate on that. Speak it. Mutter it. That's going to help you receive that revelation of that grace and that righteousness. That grace is God's empowerment, that unmerited favor, undeserved access to God the Father through Jesus, that right standing with God. The more you say it and meditate on it, the more you're going to start believing it. That's when your life is going to be transformed. That's when the fear is going to be gone, the anxiety, the insecurities, all that's going to be gone because I'm right with the Almighty God. I am in that winning position. That's so good, Anthony. And, of course, you mentioned that scripture changing my life, 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. 5, 21. It says, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, so we might become or be made the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, I struggled with this for a long time. I used to think that I had to do everything perfectly all the time, whether it was my grades or how I acted. I felt like I had to portray this illusion that I was perfect, that everything in my life was perfect, that I never made a mistake, and that was just a lie. It was false. 
But because of Jesus, I realized I was doing it all wrong. I was trying to get this approval and acceptance from God and from people, but I was already approved. Mm -hmm. I was already accepted. Mm -hmm. He already saw me as righteous. You see, I had a mistaken identity. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was. And it wasn't until I got into God's Word and found out who I was and read scriptures like the Ephesians chapter 1 that talks about all these things you have and all these things that you are in Christ. Um, there's so many other great scriptures and Romans about this same subject. It's so important to know these things. It will change your life because then you'll be acting out of who you are and not just what you do. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't read the Bible to get accepted by God. You read the Bible to find out who you are. You know, most people like the Rocky story. You know, he's just a thug, you know, and he gets a shot at the title and he makes it big. And then he ends up becoming successful and everybody has that on the inside of them. That's how God created us. He created you to succeed. He created you to win. The Bible says in Genesis 126 that God created man in his image and in his likeness. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with small beginnings. Jesus came to be the king of the world. He started in a manger with a small beginning. That's so true, Anthony. In fact, I saw a quote on Pinterest recently. <laughs> when we do our study. <laughs> exactly, that says, big things often have small beginnings. And that's so true, whether you're talking about a successful athlete or if you're talking about someone who built a business from the ground up or whatever it is in life, often big things start with small things. In Zechariah chapter 4, and verse 10, in the Amplified Version, it says, who with reason despises the day of small things or small beginnings. Don't despise those days. Every giant oak tree started with a small acorn. It all starts small. Anything great, that's how the kingdom of God. He says you got, great, you got faith, the grain of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is the smallest seed there is. If you got that much faith. You can move big mountains, small beginnings. That's so good, Anthony. I'm a partner with Ring of Faith Ministries because I believe in their mission. They have a real heart for the lost, the homeless, the widows, and the orphans. I've seen firsthand how devastating poverty and loss can be. And if I can be a small part of that solution, I'm gonna do it. Go to ringoffaithtv.com to find out how you too can become a partner with Ring of Faith Ministries. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. We hope you enjoyed round one. And this round, we're going to help you walk through trials victoriously. And when you're trusting God, you're trusting Him in every area of your life. Right. You're trusting Him with your time. You're trusting Him with your finances. You're trusting Him in your relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what trusting God is. When he says to do something in his word, mm -hmm. that's trusting him. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 22, it says that to be a hearer and a doer of the word. Right. And then James 2.20 says that a faith without works is dead. So if, I, if I'm hearing all this stuff and I'm not doing it because I don't really trust God, um, say for instance, he's talking about tithing and giving, and I'm not doing that, it's because I don't truly believe that he's got my best interest at heart, that he's truly going to keep his promise. You know, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 1, 20, all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. So I'm kind of holding back on my finances. Or for instance, I'm holding back on my time, you know, serving at church or going to church or fellowshipping with other believers. Or maybe God puts it on my heart, you know, to help the neighbor. You know, they're going through a hard time and maybe to, to you know, to mow their grass for them or maybe, maybe babysit their kids or different things like that. But I'm just like, I'm, I got too much going on. And you just start reasoning in your mind why you don't do it. Because you don't think that God's got your best interest at heart. But I've said Galatians 6, 7, that God does not mock whatever man sows, he will reap. If I'm going to sow my time into what God wants me to do, I'm going to reap a harvest. That's good. If I'm going to sow my finances, I'm going to reap a harvest. I'm going to sow my relationship, my marriage, my kid, my kid training. I'm going to reap a harvest of good. Like she said earlier, Jeremiah 20, 11. He has a plan to prosper, not to harm and give me a hope and a future. His promises are yes and amen. His promises says in Proverbs 4.18 that my path will get brighter and brighter. Ephesians 2.10, he has a preordained path. If I'm going to trust him, but i got to first know how much he loves me before I can trust him. 
That's so good. You know, when you were talking about that scripture, faith without works is dead. Mm-hmm. I just had this picture of somebody gifting me with this beautiful plant, mm-hmm. that plant being faith. And yet maybe I received it in the winter and in the springtime I was hoping to plant it, but I didn't water it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? That plant's going to dry up and die. It was a gift. It was mine. Mm-hmm. That faith is mine, but now it's dead. That's good. You know, John chapter 16, verse 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, Jesus speaking here, that in me you may have peace. In the world you're going to have tribulation. This is true. That's just part of it. But be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. First John 5, 4 says, This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith in peace. Our faith in Jesus. Our faith in what he has done for us. He said, be of good cheer. Because I've overcome the world, you can have the peace of God in this crazy, messed up world because Jesus is peace. He lives on the inside of you. Like she said, when we spend time with him, spend time in his word, and that's when we're going to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We meditate on him. We meditate on his promise. We think about him. Instead of thinking about what's going on in the world, just get away with peace. Get away with peace himself. Let that peace rule. That's why he says you can be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. We've already won the battle. We've already won the victory. Just keep your eyes on peace. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's so good, Anthony. You know, and this was a key turning point for Anthony and I when we realized that we could be in a trial but not let the trial in us. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And you might be out there going, well, how do I do that? I don't understand that. Well, At first, you have to believe it by faith because the Bible says so. The Bible says we can walk in peace. The Bible says that we have peace. The Bible says Jesus, peace himself, lives on the inside of us. We have to believe that first and then walk it out. Psalm 85 and verse 8 in the New King James says that, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly, for he will speak peace. He will speak (laughs) peace. When you hear the voice of God, that faith comes forth, that faith arises. Philippians 4, 6, I'm anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I let my requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard my heart. He spoke peace to him. I got that peace on the inside of me, walking through the fiery trials and tribulations of this life, and will come out victorious. 2 Chris 2.14, he's always leading me in triumph. As long as I'm in peace, as long as I'm in rest, I'm trusting in God, I'm going to victory. That's so good, Anthony. You know, and this is where another great verse, Romans 12.2, really comes into play mm-hmm. because it says, Do not be conformed to the world mm-hmm. or to your problems, to the trials, to the tribulations, but be transformed by renewing your mind. In other words, renew your mind to what God's Word says about your situation. We want to invite you to our New Year's Eve event. Ring of Faith and Remove Training are having an event New Year's Eve at Remove Training in Lebanon Square. It is going to be amazing. I am so excited yeah. about New Year's Eve. <laughs> We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. It's we been a while. A long time ago, and it was so much fun, and people have asked us to bring it back. Mm-hmm. And it only took us seven years <laughs> We're to very bring fast. it back. But we're going to have a great night of praise and encouragement and giveaways. There's a $5 cover at the door if you're not a Remove Training member. But we want you to come out and be encouraged on how you can have a wonderful 2020. Come check it out. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. We hope you're enjoying our best of 2019. This round, we're going to help you to be a difference maker. Check it out. And you might be out there wondering how you can share Jesus with others, and we're going to help you with that today. But I just want to say first and foremost that sometimes we holla with words, <laughs> and sometimes we holla with our life. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 16, to let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works. Let your light shine. Let your life be a light that others see. When they see you walking through life, honoring God, walking peaceably with men, just putting Him first, Thinking of others first, as the Bible talks about, you know, seeking another man's welfare, those sorts of things. When they see your light shine before men, that is hollering Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're going to wonder what you have. They're going to wonder where you're getting all this hope and this joy and this peace. You can holla with your life. That's good. And when they come up to you, that's when you're ready to proclaim the good news. Right. Because you're going to, and eventually you're going to have to share the truth about it. Right. Why are you living like this? Why do you have integrity? 
Why are why is your light shining? Why are you so happy? Why do you have joy? Why do you have peace? Well, let me share Jesus. Right. Because the Bible says Romans ten. How are they going to hear unless there's a preacher? Right. How are they going to preach unless they're sent? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. You're going to have to share the word. You're going to have to share Jesus with them. But mm-hmm. like she said, if you're going to live it out, you don't have to. I mean, I do this a lot, and I'm not the best example. Because I'll just walk up to people. You know, do you know Jesus? Are you ready to die? You know, something crazy like that. But man, just walk it out. Live a godly life, integrity. Be a giver. Then people's going to start coming to you. You don't have to go out there to them necessarily. They're going to come to you. Let me tell you about Jesus. It's that easy. This is what Jesus done for me. Because nobody can argue with your testimony. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know the whole Bible. You don't have to know all the scriptures. You don't have to know like John 3.16 and in the Greek and in the original translations and all the the different, the message translation says this, the new living. (laughs) You don't have to know all that. Yeah. This is what Jesus did for me. Nobody can take your testimony. That's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. When you start telling somebody about what Jesus has done for you, that's, that's keeping the enemy defeated. That's right. Under the feet. Where Jesus put him, that keeps him down. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The blood of the Lamb is what he shed his blood for us. We have rights because of that blood. And then we overcome the enemy by sharing that testimony. This is what he's done for me. Well, we had an opportunity after being at our church just a few years Mm -hmm. uh, to go on a mission trip. And I had been on a couple of mission trips when I was younger with youth groups and whatnot. Uh, But nothing to this kind of magnitude. We were just soul winning all the time, you know, leading people to Jesus. And we definitely, you know, stepped out of our comfort zones. At least I did. Anthony, he was a long ways out of my comfort zone. I just came out of prison from just leading many, many, many people to Jesus in there. Right. So he was on a roll. Yeah. But, you know, we got to Jamaica and we had to basically do what they call confrontational witnessing. And that's just where you go up to somebody and just start talking about Jesus. Have you ever ever had had a life-changing experience with Jesus Christ? Well, let me tell you how you can do that. But what's amazing about the people of Jamaica is just how receptive they are. Mm. Even if they didn't necessarily pray with you, which a lot of them did, they were so nice Mm. and they would stop right in the middle of their busy hustle running down the downtown (laughs) area. They just Just stop and they would just talk to you. It was so sweet. And I was just shocked because I just didn't feel like I got that kind of response from people, you know, here in the States, but they were very receptive. Our team led hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to the Lord Mm -hmm. on that trip. We were able to holla in schools. What's amazing is in Jamaica, you can go right into the public schools and just tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love that there's that freedom that people understand that Jesus is the way. He's the answer. He is the solution to life's problems. And that was a life-changing experience for us to holla in Jamaica. You know, when you were talking, I was just thinking about how oftentimes we just feel like we have to be everything to everybody every day. Mm -hmm. And that's so not true. Even with the gifts and callings that are in your life, God doesn't want you to be doing all these things all the time. You know, some days I'm mom and that's enough. It's more than enough. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Some days I'm Great teacher. Great mom. Thank you. Great Appreciate mom. that. Some days I'm teacher because I uh, homeschool our kids. Some days I'm a friend. I might go out to eat with some of my friends. I'm a friend that night. Sometimes we'll go out on a date, have date night, and, it, and I'm a wife, you know, when we're Great having wife. that time. And then there's other times when we're filming the TV show and we're a TV host and ministers. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome, but I'm not that 24 7. Sometimes I'm something else in the moment when God needs me to be. That's something else. And sometimes I'm the world's strongest TV host. Right. Like right now. Right. And then sometimes I'm the, a great husband. Right. Great dad. <laughs> In my different roles. Right. My favorite is the world's strongest TV host. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. It's okay to have a favorite. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but a little bit not, later, you'll be dad again. Dad and husband. When the cameras right. stop rolling, you know. <laughs> It's back to dad. When the lights go up. <laughs> when the lights when the go lights down. When the lights go down. <laughs> I hear the sound. Exactly. But all of these roles are important. There's nothing more or less important in God's eyes. Just keep doing the next right thing at the right time as God calls you to do it. That's good. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 139 and verse 13, it's a real famous scripture. And it says, For you form my inward parts. You cover me in my mother's womb. God designed you. Right. He formed you. He knew you from the foundations of the world. 
He had you in mind. He had a specific goal for you to fulfill. You are so valuable to God. Mm -hmm. Jesus would have died if you were the only person in this world. He loves you that much. You are so valuable. So check out this video about your uniqueness and your identity in Christ. You shape me first inside, then out. You form me in my mother's womb. I thank you. Hi God, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. I have an identity. But our goal is to become a better us, become a better you, become a better you if you're watching this TV program. You know, there's no two people alike. We each have unique individual DNA that makes us who we are. God didn't make a bunch of copycats. He created you an original. And I was thinking about this recently, how there's no two singers alike. I've heard singers that sound similar, but I've never heard two people sound exactly alike. It's so cool how God created us each with something to offer this world. There is one you. Right. No matter who, how many people try to imitate you, try to be like you, or you try to imitate or be like, there's only one them, there's only one you. Right. Be the best you that you can possibly be. That's so good, Anthony. Sincere. I didn't know that my thoughts can come from three places. They can come from me, they can come from God, or they can come from the devil. Honest. I heard God say, your mother was not the first person who left you. Uplifting. You do not have your toe, correct? Would you like to see it? Absolutely. If you hear a thud, I have passed out and hit the microphone. (laughs) Bless your heart. Be inspired by radical stories of change that prove you could be one different choice away from a better tomorrow. Everyone has a story. Everyone makes a choice. Everyone has a voice with Christy Neal. Now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. I came to Nashville to box. I had a dream to be the next welterweight champion of the world. I trained, I sweated, I pushed. Nothing was going to stand in my way. But no matter the opportunities that I had in the ring, life and bad choices kept beating me down. Even in a crowd, I felt lost. I was in the circle of defeat, drinking and shrinking into an abyss of hopelessness. But then one day, I experienced a love so great, the largest arenas couldn't hold it, the greatest champions couldn't win it. No, this love was a free gift. This love didn't require my tireless efforts. This love had a name, and that name was Jesus. When I confessed that Jesus was my Lord and believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead, he filled the empty holes. He restored the broken dreams. He breathed life into a dead soul, and now I am alive. I'm Anthony Brent Cooper, and that's my story.
calling all who thirst, you're calling all who's weak. You will fill me up, you'll strengthen me, and give so freely all good things. You gave so freely your life on Calvary. You gave so freely all good things. Never made Jesus the Lord of your life. We're going to help you to pray a prayer right now. The Bible says Romans chapter ten and verse thirteen that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It isn't about what you have or haven't done; it's about what He has done for you. Jesus paid the ultimate price when He gave His life because of His great love for you. All you have to do is simply receive that free gift. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you to say it with your mouth, to mean it from your heart. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive in it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church, Mount Juliet. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, you can go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the donate tab. You're going to find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And, and that's... How you become, become a knockout, knockout artist in life. life. All things are